16-year-old Brian Herrera was a loving son and brother to his family. He was great. He was very shy, very sweet, very loving. An A student and a kid who never caused anyone a day of trouble in his life. He wanted to do so many different things. He changed every year. He changed the story what he wants to become when he grew up and he was going to graduate this year from high school. But none of that made any difference to the killer who gunned him down while he rode his bike only three blocks from his home in Miami, Florida. He was on his way to do homework at a friend's house, but he never made it. There isn't anyone that I've spoken to who knew Brian, uh, whether it's his friends or his family, uh, who wasn't able to, to immediately convey this profound sense of loss. You know, a uniquely kind soul that had been lost to us. It was an awful, awful case to, uh, to pick up. At Crime Watch Daily, we first heard of Brian Herrera thanks to an email sent by his heartbroken stepmother, Annabelle. We are desperate and need help in solving his case, she wrote. Our family needs help bringing Brian the justice he deserves. The three-year-old murder happened only days before Christmas in broad daylight in the middle of a residential neighborhood. And yet, not a single witness has stepped forward to help find the killer. You wrote to Crime Watch Daily and you asked us to look into this story. What yes. do you think we can do for you? Well, I'm hoping that someone who saw what happened that day is willing to come forth and, and give information on what happened. We would like closure. Brian deserves justice. Annabelle Herrera became Brian's stepmother when he was four years old, but she misses him today as only a mother can. And she will never forget the day she got the worst news of her life. This is something completely devastating. It's life-changing and it's something you never get over. Brian's father, William Herrera, was at work when he got a visit from police. And they told me they found him laying on the street. He couldn't, couldn't tell me. He couldn't tell me. I had to figure it out by myself. And I was like crazy. I didn't know what to do to say. And that's when I realized Brian was not with us anymore. Christmas for the Herreras would never be the same. On Christmas Eve, my husband had to go identify his son's body. And then Christmas Day, we were planning his funeral. While the police remain tight-lipped about the details of Brian Herrera's murder, his parents have now taken on the role of playing detective, and they say that they found out some information. They believe that Brian ran into someone right here. He was coming down this way, going to his friend's house. He was intercepted right here, running from this house. Most likely, people tried to rob him. He tried to evade them with his bike and he couldn't overrun them, you know? It's been so long now, and we still haven't, re uh, you know, attained an arrest. And all these, you know, the neighbors, unfortunately, they're scared to speak. But we know that they saw, you know? Everyone knows pretty much who did this, and they're scared to come forward and, and give information. But if the Miami police have any idea who murdered Brian Herrera, they are keeping it to themselves. Miami Police Sergeant Eldis Diaz originally handled the investigation. So three years later, where are you in this case? Brian's case is not what I would consider a cold case. A cold case is one where the leads have effectively been tapped out and you're just sort of sitting around waiting for new information to develop. We're still conducting regular interviews. Uh, we, we're still reaching out to try to get uh, whatever information we possibly can to, uh, to close this case. Investigators say Brian was in the Alapata neighborhood of Miami just after 11 a.m. on Saturday, December 22nd, 2012. He was riding on North 11th Avenue toward the expressway when he was accosted and shot near the intersection of Northwest 39th Street. Sergeant Diaz was one of the first to arrive at the crime scene and remembers well what he found there. I actually found Brian's backpack. Now, what I was expecting to find uh, was narcotics or firearms, because it's so typical for us to have cases that involve gang members. Uh, but when I looked through his bag, what I actually found was drawings of Spider-Man. I found 
science papers with A's on them. I found trading cards, you know, everything that would indicate that this was in fact a child who had been shot. Um, and that is a, uh, that's a really tough thing to have to see. Uh, every night when I go to bed, I think about Brian Herrera. I think, you know, we need to close that case. And uh, as long as it's open, I'm going to feel that way. But Annabelle Herrera says that investigators aren't pushing hard enough. Now, they say they're working hard and not a day goes by that they don't think about your son. Do you think that's just talk or what do you no, think? No, maybe they do think about him, but I don't want him to think about him. I want him to work on the case. I want, I want some outcome. I, I want him to do something. The challenge is getting witnesses to speak out. We drove by the area many times and all the neighbors would come out to tell us what they saw that day. And then all of a sudden it stopped. Nobody wanted to say anything. And if I would confront someone, hey, remember you told, mm, I don't, no, I, I didn't say that. The people are scared. Why do you think they're any less scared now than they were three years ago? I don't believe they're not scared. I believe they are more scared and therefore they fear that this is going to continue happening and it's invading their community now. The memory of Brian's murder only a few blocks from their home became overwhelming for the Herreras. I couldn't even drive by the, the street of our building. It was, it was just awful. Just getting home was, was awful for me. I, I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't bury it anymore. And even in their new home, memories of Brian are everywhere. He would have graduated high school this past year he wasn't there to get his diploma, but was honored in a special way. I notice your son's high school diploma yes, on the wall. They just gave it to him in June. It was a mixture of emotions that day. It was beautiful, but it was very sad not seeing him walk down that aisle. You said you were wearing his shoes yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I thought it once in a while. <laughs> Tell me about that. We have the same size shoes, you know, and like uh, when I wear them, I feel like I connected somehow. I don't know. So, I wear them. Every Christmas, the season they lost him, he is remembered in a special way. And every day, Annabelle Herrera continues her small but unwavering campaign to find justice for Brian until she gets answers. I want justice. I want someone to, to look at Brian's story and, and feel our pain and, and just come forward. But we need to pull a few heartstrings here, and, and I think someone will come through. Well, Anna, they have absolutely pulled more than a few heartstrings. There's a resilience to this family you have to admire. They're incredible, Matt, because all of the tragedy that they've been through, and they still are hopeful, and they have this love and this light in their heart. And they are not sitting back waiting for something to happen to here. They've actually been really proactive, even in a legislative sense. Yes, they've been fighting for this law in Florida that just passed the House, and it basically would prohibit the public disclosure of a witness to a felony. In other words, someone who saw someone, their name wouldn't be given out, and maybe they would come forward, if not in this case, maybe to help another family. Well, that, let's hope that is enough to encourage someone to act. Thank you so much, Anna. And if you know anything at all about this case, you can submit a tip. We should stress that it can be done anonymously. Just visit our website, crimewatchdaily.com, or you could also call or text our toll-free tip line, that number, 1-844-800-CRIME.